Welcome to the second episode of the PCM Podcast for Season 11. I'm your host, Saul Goodman Jr. I'm joined by my co-host, Dorsey. How's it going? And then tonight's panelist, we have Capone. Capone? He's somewhere. Well played. All right. And we also have Casbon. What's cracking? And in addition, we have Easy Slays. Yo, what's up? And then we also have I'm a Fanatic. Hello, everybody. So for tonight's episode, we're kind of going to talk about what's been going on so far. I know we're only uh, six games in, so I, the league's already decided, obviously. Uh, but <laughs> we do have a little bit of a uh, – we got four topics tonight. Um, first topic being teams that are who you thought they are. Uh, not necessarily top of the league, not necessarily bottom of the league. It could be anywhere in there. Um, just they are who they who they thought they were, and one of the most common answers was America. Yeah, I think that was a team that didn't have a ton. It was a fairly there were some people with some experience, but there was a fairly new team that kind of came together late. I think them and River played as well at the bottom of the table. I think there are a couple of teams that we we talked about in the opening podcast that we kind of got down there, and that's where they've been so far. Yeah, easy. You listed them as as one of your teams that. They are who they thought they were. So why did you think that? Um, I, I thought that just because, like, they got their team pretty late. They didn't have that much time to put their team together. And I, so I don't think they would, like, be competing like that at the top league, you know? Another non-surpriser was Inter Milan, you know, having a good top form. That was uh, one of the more common answers. Yeah, I think the top six is pretty interesting right now. There's a little bit of separation. Uh, I think Atlanta was a team talked about a lot, and I think Inter out of those six were talked a lot. Um, I threw out Milan, and you know I'm not surprised that we're doing well, but I think Lyon, Lazio, and Spurs have kind of been the surprise at the top. One of the teams I picked was also uh, AC Milan. I also picked America. You know, America kind of, you know, if you're looking at the table, to me, there's a lot of surprises. So it kind of narrowed it down for me. Of course, you know, I'm, America's coming in. They're not proven. You know, I'm not saying that I expected them to be in relegation, but, you know, uh, I expected them to be pulling up that bottom half of the table for sure. And then you just look at AC Milan. You know, you got a lot of returning players from the squad that, that competed last season. And then, um, I mean, it was, you know, put to me that, you know, you upgraded every position. Dorsey, and I think you can attest to that. So by the process of, I guess, kind of just simple deduction, move up the table, you know? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I thought the team would be good, but it's really, it's just gelled really well. We got, we played a lot in preseason. I'm not used to playing that much with the team preseason, but I think it did us a lot of good. And we've just got a lot of depth. There's a lot of people that, you know, if someone, we had Beastly through the games last night and Costa Mequino came in and, and really played well. Um, Eventually, I think there's maybe like we want to settle on a, a full, you know, regular eleven, but right now we're kind of using the depth, and it's it's been been pretty good so far. Uh, another one that was a common answer, fanatic. You said Atlanta. I don't think that's uh, you know, I think they they are exactly who we thought they are. They're a good squad. They play very well together. They're playing that way all through preseason. Uh, why did you pick them? Well, I picked uh, Atlanta because I played with them or filled in with them a couple of times, and they were just really dominant on the ball and in possession and. Uh, used to playing in teams like that that like to you know stay in control of the game and don't really like to force passes um it kind of took me by surprise at first because i didn't really know what to expect from pcn because i never really played at least american 11s in like a while so uh it kind of took me by surprise and i was glad to have played with them because it was somewhat enjoyable um so i figured just by seeing that i could see them just outpassing other teams and like uh like dorsey said with ac milan and whatnot they played a lot of preseason games and they seem to be on pretty much every single night from what it looked like to me and so that's why i'm not i'm not surprised at all that both of those teams are the top two at the moment yeah i can say speaking from experience we play them quite a number of times and they're probably one of the more difficult teams to play against because they're pressing so much yeah the high press and having composed center backs then that can clear the ball when they need to and can you know dink a little x ball out um you know to the striker's feet is always a, a helpful thing Pons. You, yeah. you said Lazio, and now Dorsey already mentioned them as surprise of the season. Uh, why, why aren't you surprised? Um, if you look at them from last season, uh, I did the math on it a while ago, and I was using it last season to prove that we weren't as bad as people were saying we were. 
But if you add just one goal a game to them, they end up adding like 37 points, almost doubling their point total from the season. So when they add uh, full-time Spicy, Liverpool Mad Kev, and Pancake Waffle, I just figured things were going to work out for them. Yeah, it seems to be working out so far. They took up uh, L last night from Man City, but other than that, they've had a pretty decent start. I don't think you can ask for anything better. That being said, let's move to League One. Now, for this one, we've had a, a broad range of answers here. We're going to touch on a fair amount of teams. Uh, the one team that did come up multiple times was uh, Bayern Munich. I believe Kasbahn. So, Bayern Munich, you know, they're, one, they came from Super League. You know, two, I mean, if you look at their roster, um, Jayway is one of the names since I came in the league. You kind of hear his name every season. You know, he's always around, good players, good clubs. You know, and then um, you add somebody like Everest to the mix. I mean, if you look across their roster, it's, uh, I don't want to say veterans, but, you know, there's a lot of names that have been around here for at least a few seasons. And um, the the bigger name clubs tend to attract, you know, a little more aura around them. Also, we don't really know what to expect from a lot of the other teams in League One. So to me, that was going to be, a, you know, a good pick. Yeah, what's interesting is it's so tight at the top of, of League One. Tenth to first is only separated by four points. So uh, a lot of teams off to good starts. It's kind of interesting to see if teams like Bayern, if they push on. Because right now they're six, but there's only three points off first. So it's interesting to see if they can. But they've got a really good, they've got the third best goal differential. So I think that's a team that, you know, stats like that probably make you think they're going to be above six when it all comes said and done. You know, another team I picked was uh, was Monaco. I was just really happy when I got to see RG um, get loaned to them. He's actually an Atlanta player. You know, the plan was, uh, because this is, I think, his second season playing 11s. You know, last season, he actually would have been competing for the Golden Boot in League One had his manager been putting in the stat videos. And uh, so I think that kind of made him a sleeper for a lot of people. And, you know, I think he started off, he's got four goals to assist this season so far. So um, I think uh, him, along with some of the other players that, you know, Nozzle's been around for a few seasons now. Um, He always puts a decent squad together. So, you know, they're another one like Bayern Munich. That's going to be, I think, right there. And uh, we'll see as it goes further. Yeah, I was was a little surprised by uh, Monaco being up there, but... um... You know, Nozzle, he takes this very seriously, and you know he's going to keep trying recruiting. And he's on, he's one of those people we've already said that is on every night, you know, playing with new people, playing with different people. Some of that by choice, some of that not so much, but he definitely cares a lot, and you know he's going to put in the effort to put together a good squad. Fanatic, you had an interesting answer that no one else had. Uh, you said Chivas. Yeah, I picked Chivas because I know Pro Rage uh, from VFL, and me and him are good buddies. And I know him because like he likes to mess around, uh, and he doesn't really take things that seriously. So that's why I kind of put him towards the bottom of the table, because I knew they would kind of just throw a team together, try and get players, and then kind of play whatever position that they want to. Um, so like, I haven't checked his stats yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if he decided to go from playing striker or winger to jump, jumping into center back to then to jumping in DM and or goalkeeper. So that's why I kind of assumed that they were just kind of messing around and not really taking it too seriously. So that's why I kind of put them as, you know, towards the bottom of the table. Gotcha. So that's one of those, you know who they are, but it's not the good kind of are. Yeah. Yeah. Just messing around. Kind of like, they like to call like a meme team, I guess, if you want to put it that way. They've got some good players, and they always have, but it's just a matter of they just don't take it super seriously, and they don't usually have the full 11. And Yeah, just to like have fun, I guess. Capone, you said Dortmund. What do you know about that squad? I figured it was a matter of time before Leak came back to what he did Season 9, where he was outstanding. And then they also have a solid DM at Muffin, and then Flat Diamond's a pretty solid winger. So I just like what they're doing. And Inform Leak, best player in the league. All those players have been playing in Super League for a while, and they're all attacking players. And, you know, I've always said the biggest difference between League One and Super League is um, the pressure that the defense put on. So, you know, you add that to the fact that, you know, these guys have been in Super League for like three or four seasons, and now they're suddenly playing against defenses that don't quite pressure them as much. They'll get any attacker in form, you know? Yeah. All right. With that being said, let's move down to League Two. Uh, the most common answer, and I don't think 
this one's a hard one at all, was that Wolves was the, uh, they are who we thought they would be. Kaz Bond, I know you put this one in, and uh, Fnatic, you as well. I, uh, you know, I, I compared League One this season to China, um, and I'm going to go ahead and call League Two uh, MLS. So, you know, they, they took some, again, top players that have been up there competing in Super League, but actually, like, on competing teams in Super League, went all the way down to League Two and decided they wanted to play some ball. You know, we've actually friendly them a lot, and they always give us a good game. So, I mean, with that in mind, you know, uh, I kind of just knew they would be good. If they're giving Atlanta good games, then why would they not dominate League Two? Yeah, I agree with that. That's why, because I don't really know names too much because I'm still pretty new, but just filling in for different teams and doing different sessions and stuff, and they always have seemed like a decent team. Um, never really backed down and not really seen just because they're a League Two team that, you know, they're just going to be a walkover. And they always, like has said, they always give everyone good games. So that's why I'm not shocked at all that they're uh, up there in the top three. I'm not surprised that they're playing well, but they actually, they, you know, they're they're in third right now, and they've they have a loss to fifth place Napoli and a draw to eleventh place Sporting. So I think they're also learning at the same time. Like while they do have a good team and they should be in the promotion contention, that you know there's two teams ahead of them and they've been dropping points to teams below them. So I think they've they got to learn that this is going to be a 33 game season, and you know they may be the favorites, but like Real Madrid is showing in League One, like that doesn't mean everything right now. You hear that, Dad? John Dorsey's calling you out. I'm sure we'll get to them soon. Yeah, <laughs> we will very shortly. Uh, one of the other answers, as I previously mentioned, was Capone saying Florentina. Yes. What do I you think... know about that squad? So they have Doc Toxic and K-City Shoja, who I've played with on Switzerland in the World Cup for last FIFA. And then they also have Fear Erickson and Number 7 Slickster, who I've also been able to play with. AO Weekend. They have people that have been around for a long time. Yeah. They have the the veterans. They they were bound to do good with all the experience they have. They might not be, like, the top-tier team, but they did beat Newcastle 6-1. So they can pull off some major upsets. Yeah, I think it's going to the season that I thought Fiorentina or Sporting would kind of push on the season. Third season managers in League Two, and Fiorentina's been the one to grab that early on. Really good offense, 20 goals in six games. Really impressive from them. You know, while we're on the subject, um, uh, we played uh, this, this afternoon. We got in a, I got in a drop in with some guys from Leon, and we ended up playing Celtic. And, um, you know, they gave us a really good game. They were very organized. I don't know, just while we were talking about the table. Yeah, I think shout out. similar to to League One, there's only five points between one and fifth. Grant, we're six games in. But it's very easy to make that up. Napoli could easily end up... How many games do they play? 30? 32? 33. 33. 33, yeah. They play everyone three times. Um, so it's going to be very easy for to see some movement here. But I do think you know Florentina, Wolverhampton, and the likes that we, we've talked about here... I think they're the front runners, but that doesn't mean someone can't come and surprise us like they do every season. Speaking of which, our next topic is which top, which teams have been the most surprising. My answer for this was Tottenham. I didn't really see this coming. I don't know. I agree. I don't think we touched on them. Maybe we did in the first podcast as far as a top three team, but I, I really doubt it. I think I probably thought I think I brought them up if anyone did um cuz I played with them preseason it was a team I was thinking about signing for and I think I said you know watch out for them you know they're a mid table team with upside for for better if they get things worked out and they did have a, a rougher game day um drew Atlanta lost to Milan when they finally played some tougher competition but uh, I was kind of talking to Trial each today about his team and um, I think he knows that he's not too far away from this team sticking in that top six race, maybe pushing on for a title race. I think he knows there's a few areas they need to improve, but um, they run that 4-3-3. They got really good wingers. They've got a really, really good midfield. apox has been playing great in goal and, you know, only conceded three goals so far. If the defense stays like this, you know, they'll, they'll stay up there, I think. You know, it's funny, um, speaking of like preseason, you know, right around when people started talking about Atlanta, like we may have a good team, stuff like that. We, um... I think we ended up friendly in Spurs about three or four times in one night and lost three of the four. And because they were a promotion team, you know, we were sitting there having, you know, discussions like, all right, guys, we need to get our shit together, you know? Like, you know, this is a League One team and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, then you start the season off and 
you know, they're up there already eating top teams, giving everybody a run for their money. So it was a real good game last night. Uh, last night when we played them, though, it was very intense. You know, uh, they press as well. You know, they play a very fast game. It's a, uh, it was definitely an interesting and fun game to play. Yeah, I was able to get to see them on the marquee matchup, and I think that's where I was really it was like, hey, this team could be something special. Yeah, I think the their DM, Lynn Dorsey, said having a really good midfield, especially in a 4-3-3, I'm pretty sure it's a holding. Um, their DM, Polly Pockets, is one of the best I've seen. Um, just is everywhere, just constantly in someone's face winning the ball back, and I think that's really essential in starting counterattacks and just building a play when you know that you have a reliable DM there, you know, behind the center mids just to sweep up everything and being that, you know, that wall in front of the, the back line. Yeah, and we kind of touched on Lazio. Um, Capone mentioned them. He leaves a team. I think some of us are more surprised, but either way, they're playing well. They improved that offense. Stevens is so good. But I think the other team in the top six that we got to talk about is Lyon, who, with a game in hand, if they were to win that, would actually be top of the table. Um, I think a lot of us saw this team, saw a bunch of experienced players, but saw some weaknesses, and I think we weren't sure what the formation they were going to play. I think the general consensus from people talking, you know, talking to people in the league was that that probably a solid mid-table team, you know, maybe seventh, eighth if they play well. But they've only conceded four so far, and the offense has been really good. And as much crap as people give, like to give smoke break, he's scoring, he's playing well. Um, he and Chronic are doing bits up top. So I haven't played them yet, but if anyone has in here, do you do you have any insight on how they're doing it? I wasn't in the actual game. Or no, actually, I was. We I think we drew them one one. But I think one of the bigger things I'm surprised of was that Air Jesus made the move from center back to and he went up to Cam. And I think he's really helped stabilize that offense, make sure Chronic and Smokebreaker getting the ball were in the spaces that they like to, which I think has been very helpful. And I've, I've seen some other people over there. I know Adam Coops uh, has made his way over there. And you also have Jeepers and AJ Khan. Well, um, you know, I've done some, I've done some fill-ins with them, and uh, played with a few of these guys last season as well. And I know, like, right at the end of the season, when when Smoke Break took that break, no pun intended, and um, started building for this season, you know, he had the players in his mind that he wanted, and they got together and they started playing. It's a team of like-minded individuals. You know, they all have the same goal. It's kind of the same business model we got at Atlanta. You know. Exile went pick the same the players he wanted and he put them together and he built the team and that's what Smoke Break and them are doing you know um they have tried different different formations you know but they're very smart about it so I mean then you got the you got two solid center backs and Adam and Slipkid you know you got to have a solid defense if you're gonna compete in this league so and I feel like they uh they established that I would say one of the surprises on the other end on the other end is Manchester City. Like, I don't. I'm not. I'm not surprised <laughs> to be really? honest. And that's not going to be shade because I love meat to death. But um, people may or may not know the whole um beef between farming and meat and how that all started because half of the players there moved to farm and steam or whatever. But when we were playing with them, it was basically a game of well, I pray to God that the other team's attack stinks because we have to rely on our defense to win games. Um, and hopefully we can score on like a counter or a set piece. So that's why I'm not too surprised. Because even when I played the preseason uh, tournament with them, it was kind of the same thing. The defense had to carry because the attack just wasn't doing it enough. Yeah, it is. So after New York City folded, they did pick up, I think, a few players who were on that team. Yeah, um, as of the center back and then S. Gerard, the striker, decided yeah. to go back. Because like I said, like the, the beef was between me and Farman, not with you know everyone else that was on the team and, and him. So they decided, a couple of those two decided they wanted to go back in and play with them. I was not aware of that, but I, I guess I just saw the, the top five. Imagine that. I'm, I'm not aware of a rumor. That's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but regardless, they went from a top five team to a bottom four team. That's quite the shift. I'll tell you two huge surprises for me that I, I still look at it and I'm like, what is going on? I'd love to be a fly on the wall in, in their chats is Juventus and Bayer Leverkusen. Um, mm -hmm. I remember coming up against Leverkusen in preseason, just looking at the names on the roster. I think every single one of those players has been involved in like a title team at some point. And then Juventus, I mean, any time Italiano puts a team together, you're expecting, you know, great things. And we played them in the preseason cup and it was a solid game. But um, like I said, I mean, may maybe, maybe the league's gotten that competitive. Um, I'm interested to see if the table stays the same way or if people start making moves. 
Yeah, I definitely, and I agree with Juventus. Um, I wasn't as sold as some that they were going to be back to their old ways, but I still didn't expect them to be down to 14th. And then right above them, Chelsea in 13th, I think was a team that I think some people expected to kind of go from promotion in League One to possible title contending already. Uh, but I think in the end, they're, they just couldn't, they haven't been able to get enough quality defenders in or, or just the overall depth. Uh, both those teams have five goals for eight against, which I think you expect better offense and you expect better defense from both of them. So I think out of those three, I I think they're all going to move up. But you know, whether yeah. they move up to mid table or they move up to actual top six and and beyond is kind of depends on how those teams can rebound. Yeah, I play for Chelsea actually, and like we're starting to click in now a bit, but we're just need another like more depth now. We should be good. Yeah, because even looking at your guys' results, um, you know. You're not losing by a lot of goals, you know what I mean? A lot of them are one nil losses or, or two nil, and then I think the biggest one I see is the four one to Lazio. Um, but it's you know, it's I feel like a lot of times I remember when I played against you guys, um, we got quite fortunate with our goal and then we just sat back and just try to defend because of the bombarding of the attack and pushing up all the players and stuff. But um you guys are a decent team and I think you'll bounce back pretty or fairly quickly. So Yeah, the thing that hurt us the most is um we had like a lot of playmakers around Messino. Because he was a finisher, and after he left, like we had playmakers everywhere on the attack, like no one really is a scorer. Switching to score, which would be good. Yeah, seems... you know, I mean, dynamics change fast. We're um we we just got to the first uh, free agent signing window. There's already whispers of team. There's already been a team that folded. Um, and what happens is, is players start moving teams. You know, and all it takes is that one signing. I uh, remember the the season. What was it? Nine, where Smokebright got signed for Inter, and he came in and just scored a ridiculous amount of goals, and they just ran to the top of the table. You know, things can happen if you make the right signing. Well, with that, we will move on to League One surprises, and I don't think it's any surprise that this team made the surprises, but Real Madrid is not running away with it. I repeat, <laughs> not running away with it. Yeah, I think. That, that I think it's just an example of a team. Um, you know, you have to actually gel and and figure out how to play well. It's just having names isn't isn't a guarantee to having talent isn't a guarantee that you're going to win. Yeah, because um, the only reason why I picked them is because uh, I just thought it was just overhyped. Like you know, I just assumed you know they were going to do really well or win the league because you know everyone was saying oh they're going to win the league because they're the best. They have like Dorsey said, they have all the names. So I, I just assumed that. The same thing. Okay, well, if they got all the, you know, quote unquote, best players, then they're probably going to, you know, do bits, but it doesn't seem like that's the case so far. I mean, I do know that Dad Job has been insanely busy at the beginning of the season, which probably wasn't expected. Been told by a player in their camp that they don't practice. You know, you can't really build chemistry without practice. Just looking above them, we know Monaco practices virtually every day. We know Dortmund. You know, um, Pirates are actually a team that's been around for a while. So, you know, and um, I'm not sure about Frankfurt, Sevilla, uh, much about them, but you're not putting in the work. It'll it'll show up on game day. Yeah, well, speaking of those two as well, um, Frankfurt is a team I think some of us noticed in preseason once Hinkley got that team. People started to adjust their expectations. I think that's a team people expected to play well, and they're doing really well sitting there in second. And I know they play a lot. But I think Sevilla, to me, out of anyone in the top six, that's kind of my surprise. Um, it's a lot of the team that was Olympiacos last season. Uh, Momo's the the manager, and you look at the roster, and and even people people who have been around the league for a while, there's not a ton of big names, and you know what you would usually expect to see in the top League One team. But there's always that one or two teams in League One each season that kind of come out of nowhere. They just have great chemistry. They you know they become a team. A team you look back and you say, oh well, that's where he got his start. And that's what Sevilla looks like early on. So I'd be curious to see how they keep going from here. I mean, looking at them, um, they have the least amount of goals against. They're tied with actually Real Madrid. And that says a lot. And it's not like they're not scoring goals. They have 10. They have a plus six goal differential. You know, if you don't concede goals, you don't lose. Yeah, uh, I think Sevilla is definitely one. I think Real Madrid, obviously, you got to mention them. One team that I didn't. I'm not really sure why they're surprised. Maybe Capone can explain his answer, but Valencia. So two of the teams I picked that were surprising picked up six points on the last game day. So uh, 
Yeah, Chuck the... was in second when I picked them. By the way, so that yeah, was I, a surprise for I me. picked Man U for Super League, and then they jumped up, and then picked them. They jumped up, but I was so surprised because they got off to a bad start because they have a. Uh, a couple of players I played with on Switzerland again. OG fears God. He's good mid. He's been around for a while. DG Fox shot. He taught me how to play center back. He learned from Unix. He's a really good center back. He just doesn't have that great availability. Mr. Beat on Death Row Tall at at Modric. They're all guys who have been around. So it's nice to see that they're picking up results now. All right. Well, with that being said, let's move on to League Two. Uh, who are the surprises in League Two so far? There's six whole games. I think you got to start at the top. Newcastle, first place, five wins and a, and a loss. And you look at the roster, and it's basically a team that came in, Dodd Madden got the team, and pretty much brought in a brand new group of people that never played the league before. And, you know, I don't know the story if these guys have played, you know, divisions games for a long time together or what the deal is, but clearly they know what they're doing. And first place right now, kudos to them. Yeah, I had Newcastle as my pick as well. I think it was because from what I was told um, before I came in, people were kind of hyping up Barcelona a lot because of King Snow, what other team, uh, besides Wolves and Napoli. But uh, yeah, it was those three, three mainly. So when I saw Newcastle jump up to first, and I was like, oh, well, well that kind of came as a, a little bit of a shock. But, you know, hopefully they can keep it up and keep it going. Yeah, I'd say they've no. been a, a little fortunate so far. They only have 12, 4, and 7 against, so not a massive goal differential and see if they're able to hold on to just squeaking out those wins. And I'll go ahead and say Barcelona is a surprise for me. I know it's early in the season, but um, if I'm looking at the results, you know, um, just two or three seasons ago, some of these guys were, were competing in the Super League and were having games. The most they scored in a game is three, and uh, that's twice. You know, I just I feel like... um. A team with this kind of experience should be putting up more goals down in League 2. Could be trying out new personnel, moving people around. Uh, easy, that's your old team, is it not? I'm not oh, well, Smurf was my old manager, yeah. But what I wrote is, um, I thought Smurf was going to be on top just because, like, with the people he had on this team, they can, like, I thought they would definitely be able to compete. And when I wrote that, they were, like, seventh or something, but now they're, like, top four. So I guess they're starting to pick it up a bit. But they're not scoring that much, so. They need to start scoring a bit more. You know what they say, if you score more goals than the other team, you win. Uh, so third topic we have tonight is uh, who are your dark horses that maybe they're not top five, maybe not top six, but uh, they're mid-table to the bottom. Do you think they could end up making a run, getting to that top? Let's start with Super League. I think for me, there's – Two teams that kind of stand out. Other than we kind of touched on Juventus, Bayern, and Chelsea, teams that could move up. Um, that we're kind of surprising us have important, like kind of poor starts ahead. But I think Benfica and Liverpool, eight and nine. I think Benfica, we just expect that they'll figure it out. What's interesting is that the, the while the offense has improved a little bit, the defense just doesn't look as locked in as it was last season. So if they can figure that out, I'd expect them to push up. And then Liverpool, I know they're adding a lot of pieces, and I don't expect them to be a title contender or anything, but I think they could make a top six run if they can kind of keep recruiting and, and really figure out what they're what they're doing over there. I would probably go with, uh, I agree with Benfica, uh, but, you know, so Man United, from what I hear, they've got Ericsson lined up to sign at half season. So if they can stay in that top 10 range... Because uh, we know they got a solid defense. It's just about scoring goals. So they can stay in, 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 you know, in respectable table position when he's allowed to start playing again. I'd be very surprised if they're not putting up a lot more goals. I don't know if you can consider a dark horse team a team with Erickson in it, but, you know, they're one. And I think Chelsea, man, I, I think if they can get that swagger back that they had last season, get some, get some confidence, uh, start scoring some goals as well. They can make a run up the table as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Benfica puts it together. I would, however, be surprised by Capone's answer once again. But maybe you know more about him than I do. But Villarreal. Yes. I Those are the nothing about this squad. Those are the guys who took over Roma with like six games left last season and almost kept them in Super League. The only thing that sent them down was a penalty from Ray Reyes. 
So one goal difference between Super League. I think they went 5-0-1 or five wins and one draw over the last six. They almost stayed up. But I was doing their write-up, and they have like six guys who over the full course of a season would have averaged around 130 interceptions each. Like uh, They're a really locked down defense when they're on their game. And if they just squeak out one nothing wins which they can they could easily find themselves with a quick 15 points in a couple games so yeah well, well, they, actually, they, they didn't take over late they actually that was the team all season i think they just finally at the end of the season started to figure out how to play better and i know talking to blick who took over as manager they just kind of reorganized the team a bit this season and it's people who've played together since like season four season five been together a long time um gone through different iterations they were roma for a while they were Bayern, and yeah i think i think if they can get some more goals out of that team if the defense stays as good as it is yeah i could i could definitely see that yeah look, looking at their scores i mean they shut out psg that's lupe and lobo they tied 1-1 with Leverkusen, and they've got talent on there. You know, we've got you got Tran, Raven, Jig. Only one nothing against Lazio. And, uh, you know, we're all talking about how, how well Lazio's playing this season. Easy, you said NYC. That's, a, that's quite an unfortunate answer. Yeah, that was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite going to make it. Oh, yeah. What's the story on that, Dorsey? Do you have a, a manager lined oh, up to God. take, to take yeah. that over? We've got a manager. Uh, they kind of got only a couple hours notice on Wednesday, so we rescheduled their games. So we just kind of don't know what to expect from them from here. Um, hopefully they're on the decent side and they can at least compete in the league. Kind of unfortunate what, what happened, but, you know, if you break the rules and you can't accept it. This is why you don't go to a team with a manager of a 16-year-old, but hey. It is what it is, you know. I can only see that, that situation working out one way. And uh, <laughs> I, think, I think it played out. Let's move on to League One. Who, who is mid to, to, I guess, the bottom of the table that we think that could really challenge Orlando and Frankfurt and Sevilla and Dortmund all tied for first place right now? Real Madrid. If they practice? Hey, they might get pissed off after listening to this podcast and say, you know. <laughs> I think one of the teams in 8 through 10 right now, Marseille, Valencia, Schalke, they've all got positive to goal different chills. I know Schalke had a bit of a manager switch. They started off really well, had a couple losses last game day, but they still started well. Marseille kind of had a split there as well, but the team that's still there looks pretty together. And then Valencia, like was mentioned earlier, they're starting to pick up the pace as well. So I think one of those three teams will get themselves into the promotion mix at some point. I don't. I think... I think the title is going to come down to Orlando, maybe a Frankfurt, a Real Madrid, Bayern, if they can get it going. But I think there are some teams there in the mid-table that could get into at least a promotion mix. And you saw Liverpool last year finish sixth and get promoted. So all you need is to be in that top six and you got a chance. So here's the thing. Interesting, you, you bring up Shock at 10. Next game day, they play Frankfurt and uh, Wolfsburg. So we'll just go ahead and say they beat Wolfsburg. And if they beat Frankfurt, and then Frankfurt loses their, both of their games, and let's see who Frankfurt is playing. They are also playing uh, Roma. I mean, that's a swing right there that could see Shot go all the way up to first or second, and Frankfurt all the way down. I love it when the tables are this close. Yeah, I think one of the things I should have mentioned, probably for each league, is that the League One is six games in to a 34-game season. <laughs> Anything we say here is obviously 100% correct, and it's going to stay true for the rest of the season. I mean, for our listeners out there, can you please do the math on how many games are left? It's it's less than 70 and more than three. <laughs> well, well done. I believe it's 28. <laughs> yeah, so we're not even 20% into any of the season, though. Yeah, there is um, so much season left to play. Any predictions or... Anything like that is just based on what we, we know and what we kind of feel from the teams we've seen play. If we've even seen them play, maybe, maybe we're just looking at the results. But regardless, anything said here is just speculation. And not to take it too personally, because I remember the last time, there's some hurt feelings over uh, preseason predictions. I think we need to take that into account when we're considering any of these opinions. But I think... <laughs> At this point in time, any of these teams could really make it. 
Maybe not Wolfsburg. They have zero points and have two goals in six games. So maybe not them, but pretty much everyone else. I mean, regardless, any of these teams, I mean, honestly, just my advice, the first team I ever was on was AS Monaco in the bottom of League One. We came out last place. We won two games. On that team was myself, Zebra, Toxicity, Double, Buckshot. You know, if you stick your teams together and, you know, you battle it out, even though the season may seem hopeless, uh, we say it, we see it every season. It's the teams with chemistry that rise up. I, I didn't even know this. Wasn't Enter down in the bottom of League One at 1.2 when Koof took over? Um... I don't think no, because I think he took over before the season. I think they they played pretty well early on, but it was just still it was a bunch of people who it was pretty much their first season, or maybe they played a little bit of some season seven. But that season eight was just a got a bunch of people who now are top of Super League players, but they had to figure it out down in League One. Mm. So yeah, I mean my point is is uh, stick it out. You know, even if you're Wolfsburg and haven't won a game in, in League Two, man, stick together, make some additions, and climb your way up. All right. Well, with that, let's move on to League Two. Any dark horse predictions for this one? I think Fiorentina originally, but uh, they're in second right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess and go with uh, Napoli and see if they can kind of make that final push and and see what they can do. I think from talking to their manager, um, I know he's still been just trying to get people in slowly but surely, but he's getting there. And what one of you all was saying earlier, um, I'm gonna say Celtic. 13 goals for is the third best number in the league, but they've conceded 18. So if that's a team, if they can just, I think, I think he's just been struggling to get full 11. So if they can just get a full back line and they can start playing with 11, if their offense is that good right now without a full team, you know, they might be a dark horse down there in the mid table that can actually challenge the likes of Wolves and Barca, who people expect to be good. And then the surprises up there in Fiorentina, Newcastle. I agree. That would be my pick for all the same reasons. I also pick Celtic. Yeah, same. We just love Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think you, you, exa- you touched on it exactly. If they can figure out a defense, they could easily climb that table pretty quickly. I think the other team you have to go mentioning um, would be Napoli, which we talked about a little bit already, but they have a plus six goal differential sitting in fifth. Um, I think they could easily be challenging for the title in, in a few game days if, if the chips fall the right way. Let's uh, go to the last topic, uh, which is who has been the best defender in the first few game days, which is just six whole games. Uh, had a fairly good spread. Easy Slay, as you said, Matty Dot. Have you seen him play? Um, Yeah, I've seen him play. He's been pretty good. Him and Foot King Lake. They played at PSG last season, and now they're just holding it at Atlanta. Yeah, we haven't played them yet, but uh, only conceded two goals so far, and I think they're showing that their chemistry and talent that they've you know, been able to develop over the seasons is, is definitely making a difference for them early on. Yeah, we talked about Maddie and Foot King coming over, and Kaz, that was your answer as well with Maddie. Uh, a little bit of a home field you know, advantage there. But regardless, we talked about them as being one of the better transfers, and it seems that it's really paying off for you. Yeah, I mean, when I picked Matt, um, we hadn't played last night's games, and uh, it looks like Vato had a really good game. Uh, really good night last night, but I mean, with two less games in Vato, Maddie's got 19 interceptions. And personally, I I've seen him make some great plays this season. Yeah, he plays on my side, so I get to co- kind of go forward sometimes and count on him to be there to save my ass. Yeah, I think a couple of the the leading defenders on those surprise top six teams. I think Slip Kid has really solidified that Leon backline. Some people weren't sure if he really deserved that team of season last season, but he's off to a good start, and Leon's got a really good defense. And then over at Spurs, I know Badger at left back has been one of the best fullbacks in the league, and Varane has really impressed me when I've seen him on stream and then we've played him. he's He really looks like he's up for Super League defense right away. Yeah, also Adam Coops. Adam Coops is a quality center back. He's also at Leon. It seems like this season there's a few teams that have assembled pretty good defenders Atlanta being one, Liam being one. I think there's other teams in the league that could surely need at least some of those players. We'll see if there's any movement coming up when that June 16th date opens up. Yeah, and we've got a lot of them at Milan, um, 
but I've I've really a lot of good ones too. But I've been really impressed by Peanut this season. Um, he's been a good center back around for a long time, but I think there's been seasons where he's maybe not been as locked in. He's he's had his his mistakes, um, but he has been immense in every single game and has played that middle CB about as well. I've seen someone, and it's he's only been there for the last two game days. He missed the first one, but if he plays like this all season. You know, he's really going to help carry us to whatever we end up, whatever we can win this season. He's going to have a big part in, in playing a role in that. Yeah, my original pick was as a one from the NYC team. And uh, if he does end up playing for me, he'll be a good pick for them as well. But I kind of switched it up and had to back up my boy Pineapple Pot Pie. Um, we ended up both going to Milan after the whole NYC debacle happened. And so if he can kind of make his way into the first team and solidify game time, I think he'll also be helping out uh, the back line at Milan uh, because he's probably one of the best center backs I think I've ever seen play. So we'll see what he can do. Uh, Capone, who did you pick for this one? I can't seem to access your information. I I picked Braveheart, but of course he didn't play the last two games. (laughs) But at the time, yeah, at the time he was, uh, he had 11 tackles and nine interceptions through four games along with 16 possessions won and my whole career, I was one of those defenders putting up stats in lower mid-table teams. So I respect the defenders who put up stats in lower mid-table teams more than some other people in the league do. But those are all my picks for defenders in lower table teams. That's where those teams who really need that addition, you can find some gems down there. Go look, go look at that. Fair enough. I will say that those lower teams, you know, this is a debate I think we've seen in the Discord plenty of times, end up getting more defensive stats because they don't have the ball. Well, interesting stat that I didn't re- even realize Foot King pointed out to us last night. He doesn't have one tackle this season. I think I was looking at Milan. I think Peanut's the only center back who's played a game this season that has any tackles. <laughs> it's it's just, you know, there's it's just a style thing. And that's the thing is Peanut does make – he is a little bit more aggressive at times, and he will step in and make a tackle, but – there's a lot of center backs that finish the season with like 10 tackles and it's just, mm-hmm. it's just a style of play. And I think it's just the game just being crap as well, because a lot of times they'll count the tackle as like a possession one instead of, and sometimes they even count that either. Like you'll end up doing the tackle animation and the game just doesn't, you know, accept it as a tackle, especially if you lose the possession as well. So then they'll go into the possession loss category. Yeah. And I think that's uh, also, a, I mean, what you're talking about is a very good reason why and go just on stats for team of the week as well. Yeah, I think that brings up the debate that I think everyone has. Is it just stats or is it an eye test or, you know, what do you base that on? Because you can have the, like Benfica had the best defense by far last season and maybe the best defense we've ever seen in PCN. But they had a, they had a few defenders that just didn't have as many stats. Perps being one of them, just didn't have as many stats as some of the other CBs. But the eye test tells you that he's one of the better ones. And I think that we're seeing that now with him not playing every game. Yep. I uh, yeah, it's it's tricky. I I've always you know I have this debate in Discord and people sit there and I like I like to get into it now and then. Um, not even really get into it like. You know, it's 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 nothing i never want to be personal or have people be like you know it's there's my way or the highway i don't think and that's something i like that when the people and anyone we've ever had vote for team of the week teams anything like that they don't i don't tell them that you you base your your opinion and your votes on this stat and that stat or or the you have like it's i kind of like that there's people who use the eye test more than others there's people who rely stat on stats more there's kind of a variety of opinion and i think in the league you see that as well as people that say the same people are the best every single season regardless if they're actually watching their stats and watching them play they just in their opinion they were really good back then so they must still be and then there's people who think the best players the guy who has the most in this stat category this season so really just it's all up to interpretation i don't think there's one way to do it but it's it's always a fun debate that i don't think will ever end in any season no i think it's 100 percent subjective there's no objective answer that would resolve it once and for all yeah, and then real quick, I do. I was kind of looking at the League One stats, and um, uh, James T is a guy that had a really good, I think, League Two season a couple years ago. Got a League Two team a season, and he's been a key part of that Frankfurt defense. Um, so quick shout out to him. And then UFO Spiders, a really good defender who hasn't really played for a number of seasons, but I know J Way has has been singing his praises over at fullback for them early on in the season and I know he's always he was always a really good defender when he played so if he can play the full season it would not shock me if he got himself a tot shout. Casbon, you said T and Scones. I haven't seen him play. I thought he was a 
a winger at some point. He made a change to defensive. When I pulled up the stats the other night, Ian Scones was somewhere on there. Yeah, he's been playing. Yeah, he's at, always been a center back. Yeah, they're playing a three back at, at Frankfurt, I'm pretty sure. He's one of them, along with, with James. Yeah, he's been good this season. Well, with that being said, I want to thank all my panelists for joining me tonight. My co-host, Dorsey, as always. Uh, we appreciate everyone tuning in. I hope you enjoy the show and look forward to putting forth the next one. Take care, everyone. <laughs>